Welcome to another edition of Dan Frequently Asked Questions. In this edition, we will be addressing middle ear barotrauma as a possible cause of inner ear barotrauma. Keep watching. We got a question from a diver who had done a series of breath hold dives and gradually found it harder and harder to equalize and in the process perforated their right and left ears respectively over a period of time and different dives. Now the question was whether these perforations would leave their tympanic membranes weakened, one, and secondly whether it would predispose them or in fact may have caused in ear barotrauma. So I'm just going to unpack this a little by starting to say that if one has had an eardrum perforation and water has entered the middle ear, it is wise to see a diving physician or an EMT because usually antibiotics would be prescribed to prevent an infection and it may be necessary to have cortisone to bring the swelling down to allow the eustachian tube function to recover and thereby the eardrum uh, membrane allowed to heal as well. Uh, otherwise you keep equalizing through the hole in the eardrum instead of through the eustachian tube. The second thing is that a healed perforation often is associated with what we call tympanosclerosis. In other words, it's actually a toughened area of the eardrum. And as a result, yield perforations in many cases are actually stronger than the rest of the eardrum. So that is not necessarily a problem, although there are certain cases where there is a thinning of the tympanic membrane. And this is something that you would need to discover uh, via an otoscopic examination, which an ENT or diving doctor would be able to do. Lastly, as far as inner ear barotrauma is concerned, the cause of inner ear barotrauma in relation to diving is a forceful valsalva maneuver. When a forceful valsalva maneuver is associated with a sudden equalization, what happens is the eardrum bulges outwards and the round window can actually perforate inwards. In other words, as the oval window moves outwards with the eardrum that's suddenly equalizing, the round window is sucked inwards and can actually implode. So that's one mechanism. The other mechanism is if the attempt continues, the person strains and strains, then the increased pressure in the inner ear may result in the round window uh, rupturing outwards. It's fairly rare for the oval window to perforate simply because it is essentially fortressed or uh, stabilized by the stapes footplate. So it does happen, but it is less likely to happen. However, simple passive perforation of the tympanic membrane as a result of middle ear barotrauma is very, very rarely associated with any ear problems with the exception of an infection or irritation of the middle ear also being transferred to the inner ear and then resulting in symptoms that may include either ringing in the ear or some dizziness and even vertigo. So if you have dizziness, ringing in the ears or significant deafness after a dive, it's always wise to have it seen to as opposed to um, uh, ignoring the situation and possibly suffering the consequences. 